Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you should know of as an investor. So for more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about the general stock market and how you've been investing lately, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. You should know that both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones have reached new records lately due to enthusiasm surrounding various earnings reports. But that's not all. We've also seen companies like Microsoft, Meta Platforms, and Uber also reaching all new all-time highs, which are extremely impressive. That's why Uber is already up around 2.23% right now, so investors are loving this. To add to the enthusiasm, Bitcoin is also doing quite well today, and investors are looking forward to the approaching Federal Reserve meeting, where we will get new information on various interest rate increases or decreases. And if you didn't know, they are planning to decrease interest rates, which should increase the overall bullishness of the general stock market as well as the economy. So those are things that we could look forward to as investors. Speaking about things that investors need to know, let's talk about FanDuel, which recently had an IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. This company owns an online sports betting platform, and they compete directly with other companies such as DraftKings. And recently, they became listed on the New York Stock Exchange, even though they already had an IPO on the London Stock Exchange back in 2019. As an investor, this company should clearly be on your radar because they are dominant in the sports betting industry. The executives over at Flutter, which is the parent company to FanDuel, said that the United States is a natural home for their platform. FanDuel is actually one of the United States' largest online sports betting leaders with over 40% market share, which is right behind the number one rival, which is DraftKings, which is the true market leader in this market. Together, FanDuel and DraftKings control approximately 70% of the United States' online sports betting marketplace. So, other rivals, such as MGM and Caesars, are very small players in comparison. This is why I would personally advocate to buy both of these companies if you want exposure to sports betting in your portfolio. I normally invest into the top two companies in a specific market at any given time. As an example of this, if I invest into Coca-Cola, I will also invest into Pepsi. Likewise, if I have invested into Home Depot, I will also invest into Lowe's. And similarly, because I own DraftKings, I will also also add FanDuel to my portfolio. The sports betting market is really heating up ever since the United States Supreme Court struck down a federal ban on it back in 2018. So clearly, this market is entering its stride, and I anticipate that investors, if you don't get in early enough, could miss out on huge returns. We also have to remember that the Super Bowl is coming up for football, meaning that DraftKings and FanDuel could receive a lot of airtime for their respected platforms. The NFL even came out with a statement saying that on the Super Bowl, there will be three sports betting ads during the broadcast. Various advertisements for various sports betting platforms flood the market right now. However, the NFL said they plan to limit this by only allowing three such ads during the Super Bowl. An NFL spokesperson even said Said, we have put some policies in place to limit the amount of advertising for sports betting that happens in our live games. It's roughly one ad per quarter. All told, less than 5% of all in-game ads are sports betting ads, end quote. This means that the NFL is trying to respect viewers' discretion and they are trying to find a balance. But overall, by investing into companies like FanDuel or DraftKings, you could anticipate a lot of upside in the future. But always make sure to do your own research on of both of these companies. You should also be aware of a recent move that was made by none other than Elon Musk, which is the CEO of Tesla and other companies like SpaceX as well as Neuralink, which we will talk about right now. For context, Neuralink is a company that is trying to implement bionics into a human specimen. And the reason why this company is in the news is because their first human subject received an implant from Neuralink and they are recovering pretty well, according to Elon Musk himself. This marks a major milestone 
milestone for this company and for the emerging brain computer interface industry in general. The end goal here is to help people who have experienced traumatic injuries like paralysis. And if all goes well, Elon Musk hopes to extend this healing to vision loss. If all goes well, Elon Musk himself even wants to eventually merge humans with artificial intelligence. So this is something straight out of a sci-fi book. The reason why we would want to pay attention to this company is because if they go public, you need to be already informed about this company. And trust me, it would be a huge missed opportunity if you didn't invest into this company if you could. Clearly, Neuralink already has FDA approval, which they achieved back in May of 2023, to do clinical trials on humans. The reason for this is because Neuralink has already seen major success with their extensive tests on primates such as monkeys who were able to move cursors or a mouse on screen or even play video games like Pong with just their brain power. In my opinion, Neuralink is a leader in this regard, but they do face stiff competition from non-publicly traded companies such as Synchron, Onward, Precision Neuroscience, and BlackRock Neurotech. But to no one's surprise, Neuralink stands ahead of the pack, and in my opinion, they are a leader because their device actually has the ability for them to go deeper into the subject's brain. So please keep an eye and an ear out for this company, especially if they ever try to go public, because you need to be aware of this because this could potentially be the future of humanity. Speaking about companies which are ran by Elon Musk himself, let's talk about Tesla, because Tesla is in the news today. Tesla, if you didn't know, is an electric vehicle manufacturer, which is also an energy storage and energy generation company which focuses on artificial intelligence. Recently, shares of Tesla have fallen modestly after a judge voided Elon Musk's $56 billion stock compensation plan. If you didn't know, many executives and CEOs of companies get paid in stock, and Elon Musk wanted $56 billion worth of stock for his compensation. Now, the good news is that by this being voided, the the compensation plan reduces potential dilution for shareholders, so arguably this could be good news for Tesla shareholders. However, with that being said, we still have Tesla's board, which could offer a new compensation plan for Musk in a very short amount of time. Musk already wants more shares so he can have more voting rights and power to determine where the future of Tesla goes, and in my opinion, just let him have it. The end game here for Elon Musk is to acquire 25% voting power. This allows him to steer the company where he wants it to go, but it doesn't give him enough power to void or overturn a majority. In my personal opinion, I really don't care that much. Let Elon Musk run his own company. It doesn't really bother me because so far, Tesla has been a phenomenal company, and I think investors are being extremely irrational by selling Tesla shares. The company is currently trading at $191 per share, and ever since it dropped below $200, I've been adding it to my portfolio. However, always make sure to do research before you add or invest into any company company because that's just proper risk management. Another company that has dropped in their share price recently is AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices. The reason why AMD fell in their share price is because they recently delivered mixed quarter four results. They earned an adjusted 77 cents a share on sales of $6.17 billion for the December quarter. However, analysts anticipated that they would bring in 70 cents per share on an EPS basis and sales of $6.13 billion. Now, what's interesting is that their EPS literally met expectations while their revenue and sales beat expectations. But why is the company falling in their share price? The reason why I think AMD stock is falling in their share price right now is not necessarily due to their revenue or earnings per share, but rather due to their future forecast for their revenue. For the current quarter, AMD predicts that they will bring in revenue of $5.4 billion. Well, analysts actually estimated that they should bring in around $5.73 billion. So clearly, this has let both investors and analysts down regarding their future predictions. But don't be dismayed and feel free to buy this company on weakness because their chief executive seems very bullish on this company along with a handful of other investors. The chief executive even said, and I quote, We finished 2023 strong. Demand for our high-performance data center product portfolio continues to accelerate, positioning us well to deliver strong annual growth in what is an incredibly exciting time as AI reshapes virtually every part of the computing market, end quote. Overall, I have been purchasing this company and adding them to my portfolio because I believe the future of this company looks extremely bright, considering the hype around artificial intelligence in which this company will benefit greatly from. Speaking about fantastic companies, you should be aware that Walmart announced a three-for-one stock split, and I absolutely love Walmart. 
Walmart because they are an extremely successful retailer. Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, said on Tuesday that they plan to initiate a three-for-one stock split in an effort to make shares affordable for purchase by its associates. So what does this really mean? If you didn't know, Walmart offers a stock purchasing plan for employees to allow certain associates within Walmart to buy stock through payroll deductions. But here's where it gets good, because the program provides a 15% company match on the first $1,800 per year that you invest into Walmart stock. If I was a Walmart employee, I would immediately take advantage of this because they are essentially giving you free money in the form of stock, which can appreciate as time goes on, so it's a win-win situation here. Now, in regards to the stock split, essentially, Walmart expects the total number of shares to increase from 2.7 billion up to 8.1 billion after the split. There is a lot of mis information out there regarding stock splits, so let me break down this stock split for you. The shares issued in the split will be payable after the market closes on February 23rd, and shares will begin trading on a split-adjusted basis on February 26th. By increasing the total number of shares, this will decrease the price per stock, and this will make it more affordable for people to buy into Walmart, but it does not have anything to do with the fundamentals of the company or the market cap of the company. Essentially, Walmart is arbitrarily lowering their share price. As an example, let's say you own one Walmart share, and let's just say it's worth $90 per share. Now, after the split, you are going to have three shares. However, the total number of those shares are not going to displace your total value because now each share is only going to be worth $30 per share. They are not going to be worth $90. They are going to be worth $30. So your total is equal before and after the split. If you have any other questions about stock splits, feel free to comment down below and I will answer them. Essentially, your total value will not change due to the stock split itself, and instead it's just cutting up the amount of shares that you currently have, and it's multiplying them by three. So I hope that was clear. Now let's move on to our next story. Microsoft is one of my top five favorite stocks, and recently their profit soared by 33% on AI cloud computing investments. So this is a huge catalyst for an already gigantic company. So let's jump right into this story. Microsoft said that their profit for the October through December quarter soared by 33%, which is a significant upside, and this was mainly due to their investment in artificial intelligence technology. The company reported net income for the quarter of $21.87 billion, or $2.93 per diluted share, which beat Wall Street's expectations of $2.79 per share. So it's great to see how Microsoft is beating Wall Street expectations because they brought in $2.93 and Wall Street only expected them to bring in $2.79. So this was a very good beat on Microsoft's part. Now this earnings per share beat wasn't only due to artificial intelligence investments. As an example, the results are the first to incorporate the finances of video game maker Activision Blizzard, which Microsoft formally acquired on October 13th for $69 billion. So we got to see Activision Blizzard and their overall finances reflect on Microsoft's, which clearly was very positive. But despite the earnings per share beat, despite the amazing profit increase, and the investments in artificial intelligence, as well as the financials from Activision Blizzard, Microsoft shares still dropped in after hours trading. This should go to show you that sometimes investors are irrational, even when the company performed extremely well. And I'm very excited for the future of Microsoft, considering that it's literally one of my top five favorite stocks to invest into. Speaking about a company which I love to invest into, let's talk about Google's parent company, which is Alphabet. And Alphabet recently posted double-digit revenue growth for quarter four. However, at the same time, some investors are uneasy because their ad sales rose at a slower pace than anticipated. Alphabet is the parent company to Google and YouTube, and both of these make loads of money from advertising. Google is clearly the number one search engine in the world, and YouTube is a video platform. Recently, Alphabet stock ticker symbol G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L, has been extremely volatile even after Google's parent company returned double-digit revenue growth. I'm actually a little shocked considering that G-O-O-G stock is down 1.16% despite this very good earnings report which signaled to investors that this internet powerhouse has regained its footing in the market. This would mark Alphabet's third consecutive quarter of increasing revenue growth which is a very positive sign for a company. However, it seems that investors 
investors wanted to focus more on the negative, and they are focusing on the fact that Google's ad sales growth lagged. However, I think investors are overlooking the increase, which we have seen in other areas, such as cloud computing, as well as subscriptions to YouTube. It seems that investors are worried that advertisers are concerned about the direction of the economy amid still high interest rates. But like we talked about in the very beginning, it seems that interest rates are actually on their way down, and we're going to get more information regarding this after the Federal Reserve has their meeting. But despite this news, it seems that investors are still very anxious considering that there is three things that are weighing on their conscience. The first would be the upcoming US presidential election, the second would be the war between Russia and Ukraine, and lastly, you have conflicts in the Middle East. As for me, I will continuously invest in the general stock market because it doesn't really matter what's happening in the general macroeconomic picture. Over the long term, it will all iron out, and I think that if you invest in times of volatility, those are actually the best investment opportunities. But let's get back to Alphabet. Their revenue for the October to December period climbed 13% percent from the previous year to 86.31 billion dollars. And this would mark Alphabet's first quarter of double-digit revenue growth since April to June of 2022. So I really like how this company is coming back with a vengeance, and I'm going to continuously buy this company as time goes on. PayPal should also be on investors' radar. And if you didn't know, PayPal is a gigantic financial technology company that operates a payments platform. They essentially allow for money transfers between peer-to-peer -peer as well as peer-to-business. They operate an online payment system, which is literally globally recognized. And recently, PayPal Holdings, ticker symbol PYPL, is in the news, and it's not very good. The company recently announced a lot of job cuts because the CEO wants to trim the fat off this company, so to speak. The CEO even said, and I quote, I am in the process of evaluating our most profitable growth priorities and aligning our resources to those priorities. He goes on to say, We will become leaner, more efficient, and more effective, driving a greater velocity, innovation, and impact for our customers. End quote. According to the article, PayPal's cost base was too high, and it was slowing down the company, so now they are laying off people to hopefully turn greater profits. Even with all of that said, I still think PayPal is a pretty good company, but always make sure to do your own research. We also have Apple, which is a gigantic technology company looking to release their quarter one earnings report. Apple is known for producing the iPhone, which is a smartphone. They also have various personal laptops and accessories. And this author believes Apple's first quarter results will reflect a slowing demand for their flagship product, which is their iPhone. However, the good news is that their mixed reality headset called the Vision Pro could actually buffer this problem for Apple. But in the end, you really can't sink a technology company that is as large as Apple. And if you didn't know, Apple is one of my top 10 favorite stocks and I heavily invest into them. Apple has experienced some weakness over in China because it seems that the Chinese are not buying the iPhone like they used to. However, with that being said, I anticipate that Apple will roll with the punches and the long-term opportunity for this company remains extremely strong. So with that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these stories. Clearly, the Neuralink story is the craziest one, so I would love to hear your thoughts down below about that. And with that being said, I wish you the best of luck, happy investing, and I will see you in the next YT video.